uh, it's a tr traditional Catskill uh, Hendrickson pattern, uh, tied uh, uh, hundred a hundred years ago maybe I don't know, but um, they've been around forever. There's like five or six of these things. There's the uh, Red Quill, Quill Gordon, Light K Hill, March Brown, and the Hendrickson. They're all the same, upright and divided wood duck wings. You just change the color for the buck. And they should be size, uh, tied on a size 12 hook. We're gonna use a 14 for tonight's fly because we got the extended body that'll give us a size 12, which is what a Hendrickson is. So, just thought, there's the, the pink, <laughs> this was a big hit Monday. Um, the pink recipe has been around forever. You read it in books, you read, see it in videos, you see stores selling the dubbing. Where the pink came from, I have no idea. But the, the recipe that got me the most was pinkish, urine stained, red fox fur from a female in heat. <laughs> Where are you gonna find that? <laughs> what if you got a male as your pet fox? Or you, it's not in heat. But um, don't worry, uh, it doesn't matter. They don't look like that anyway. I'm not an entomologist, he is. But I can't imagine that the Hendrickson's on the beaver kill, and I was born in western New York, and I, I've been to the beaver kill, but I was really little. I, I can't imagine the Hendrickson there looks any different than ours. Um, we spent a lot of time on that, him and I, and the guys at the shop back then. Uh, we were on the flies water, the Manistee, and uh, one afternoon, and uh, like he talks about the springtime, weather perfect, fish feeding everywhere, they'd splash your waders. Yes, we caught some fish. We had a lot of refusals, and we didn't catch any big fish. So we, what we did is we got, we always carried these little things, and this bug bomb, and we picked up duns, and we put them in that bug bomb, and took them back to the shop, and analyzed the color. And we finally came up with a mixture, and I, I printed a sheet for each one of you. The original mixture was fur. We couldn't get fur in Betis Olive anywhere, so we switched to Spectre Blend because basically what happens with light olive and Betis Olive in the fur, it turns it brownish because Betis Olive is really dark. Well, Spectre Blend already has a, what do they do with it? Brownish olive Spectre Blend. So all you needed is the pink and the rusty spinner and you're good and it mixes really nice so then they left it up to me to tie the fly and that this is what I came up with now I finished a bunch for him for the store his are different he wanted a hair wing so it's calf body hair and we're going to use Polly pick out a nice one this time Dave he picked one out Monday night it was probably one of the worst ones I tied I had to put it up here so um, I tried to come up with a way because I talked to Tyler and he said we have a lot of beginners well when you deal with monofilament I can tie the fly without taking the hook out Tyler can probably tie the fly without taking the hook out I decided to take the hook out I, I think that one's okay you tell me it's all right. yeah that's better So I, I said, probably shouldn't show them this because see now they, they just say screw it, I'll just buy them. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not easy to tie, but they're not that hard. We'll get you through it. But um, when we got, uh, when I got through them, it, doing the ones for him, I said I got to try something different for these beginners because this monofilament, you're, especially if you use a regal vise, I see some of you got Renzettis. You might be able to figure out a way to do it. The vice gets in the way. You've got to tie down on that mono, and then you have to deal with the microfilms. And why I picked those things, I have no idea, but I picked them. If it gets to be a problem, that's the microfilms. If it gets to be a problem, I've got moose. And I already cut it, it's real fine. We can use three of those if you struggle with the microfilms. I'll struggle with micro and I've tied a million of these things, so. 
if we need to go there, we can go there. And we're going to use poly. We're not going to use the hair. Um, when we get to the hackle portion, try not to overhackle this fly. It doesn't need it. You don't need to do it. Um, if I tip this up, and you can see. You're going to be using saddle hackle. I use a neck, and I only use one feather. And your barb count is probably going to be higher than this. My barb quality is probably going to be higher than that. But don't over hackle it. But we we got to talk about hackle when we get to that point. So anyway, I took the hook out after I put the monofilament on. I took the hook out so you could work with it just like the hook was in the right vice the correct way. It worked great. I think it's even faster than trying to get around that monofilament. You have better control over your thread, and especially when you got to tie those things in there, the tails, and dub it. It's tough to do right here. So, but if it's going that way, you get your hand on it and control it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the hook out. Got a couple other little tricks I'll show you. Uh, the sponges are wet. They're brand new, they've never been used for you to wet your fingers. You need to wet your fingers a lot with this thing so you don't have to take your mask off. Um, I learned the, uh, uh, the value of a sponge when I'm doing his Gartside streamers. They're marabou. It's all dyed marabou. And I looked at my fingers one day, I was doing black ones, and I'm going, I wonder how much of that dye I just swallowed. And I just switched to a sponge, and that's, that's how I do it now. Because you're, you're in here all the time, and all this stuff's got dye in it, so. I don't know, but let's give it a whirl. So my glasses fog up, so I, sometimes I gotta stop. But. Um, I use, one of my things is, I like this color, Claret. I use it a lot, obviously I don't use it on a yellow or a white fly, a light colored fly, doesn't look right. Bronze olive is perfect. Um, olive, anything like that's fine. Because um, your your hat, um, your dubbing is going to be brownish olive. I still use this just because I love it and uh, I get a lot of criticism about it from you know who, but uh, I've used it for years. I think it's pretty. So we're going to start our thread. You've got to learn, with this fly especially too, to tie with tension. My bobbins are set up stiff, and I know how much uh, pressure I can put on that thread because I've worked with it all my life, and I'll still break it. Everybody got their little pieces of mono. Give yourself enough so you can handle it. And tie the butt so it's about in the middle of the hook. This is where you want to tie with tremendous tension. It's going to want to roll off there. Just keep cranking that down. Don't worry about it if your mono straightens out. You can be, it'll it'll bend back. The, the, we just we need to keep that up on that hook. So move it. Um, do whatever you got to do. We're not going to leave it that long, obviously. But yeah. At this point, you can if you have Zappa Gap, if you like that stuff, I do, or head cement or something. Um, put some head cement on that and then just tap it with your finger and it'll dry really quick. Uh, Zappa Gap takes a little longer to uh, die or to dry, but we're going to trim this. We've got to, in your mind, kind of uh, what the uh, shank length of the 14 is, kind of make that the length of your mono and trim it. So it should be about like that. Now, at this point, what we're going to do is everybody's there. We're going to turn the hook around. 
So take it out of the vise with your finger. Keep it, keep your bobbin on the opposite side of you if you can, because you're gonna your thread direction is gonna change. But if you do it this way, nine times out of ten, uh, you can just wiggle it and it'll it'll be fine. Like that. The nice thing about the 50 pound is that um, even if you're straightening it out when you're tying it, uh, you can it'll bend right back up. It'll curl right back up once we get this thing done. We're going to put a thread base on this. We're going to go about halfway up. There's a number of ways to keep the tails and the thread and the dubbing on the end of this thing. You can try with thread and head cement and try to get a little ball there or thread and a tiny bit of dubbing and try to get it to stay there. Nine times out of ten it flies right off. So to get the tails to split you need a little ball. That's If this was a two-tailed fly those microfibrils are going to split just like that. But it's got three. So we got to figure out a way to get that third one or find it. <laughs> so to make my ball, I gave up on all that stuff. I just do this. Just like that. You are welcome to use this if you don't have one. Just pass it around. Do not touch the thread with that. Get it just close. Now continue up, get your thread up there. Your thread can't come off now. It goes quick. Yeah, just put it near it. Return your thread down a little bit. Now we're going to have the most fun you've ever had in your life. We're going to try to put three micro fibbit tails on this thing. <laughs> Like I say, if it gets to be a problem, we will switch to moose. Because they're hard to work with. Because they're, yeah, they drive people nuts. You want the tails to extend past the your little ball about the, the length of the extended body. Anywhere in there is close. Just don't get them way out there or too short. They're going to want to roll too. Got a little bit longer. See, now you all, that would work perfect, but it was underneath. You just got to monkey with them. And you got to be able to, they're hard to see. That's the big problem with them. But once you get up to that ball, tight, nice tight wrap, and they should split like that. If you can see three, just leave it right there. Don't frustrate yourself any farther. It's always the middle one that gets you. You can't can never figure out which one that is. Make sure they're tied down real well. Now if you're fortunate enough to get them in there in three, then put some head cement up there so they stay there. going to dub it. So we got to get our thread back to the back, right to the up against the little bead. Don't use too much dubbing. That's the biggest mistake beginners make. They put tons of it on there. You, you don't want to do it. Just a tiny bit. You want to make your thread dirty. That's all you want to do. Especially when we get back down here on the hook, because of the thickness of the mono, You've already doubled this hook size, so you got to just make your thread dirty. Stretch it right out. It stretches out nice. This is where you can wet your fingers. If you use wax, you can do that. Make 
nice tight wraps take your time that one's a little thick at this juncture where the mono sticks up from the hook we have to get the dubbing in there when the hook in this position you got to get it in there now because when you turn that hook back around you can't get it in there so make sure you if you have to add dubbing add a little bit more dubbing that's why I don't use wax because everything sticks to my fingers and I don't have time to be when you tie flies like I tie them you got to be fast and uh, every little trick you can come up with to save yourself 10 seconds helps. But jam that dubbing right up in there, just like that. So you got that covered. Now we can turn our hook around. Again, try to keep that thread on the outside. And you got to get it to <laughs> wrap the other way. I usually do it like that. You can do it um, even if you had to cut your thread and start again. You can do it. But if you wiggle it around enough, you'll get it. And if you've got a little extra dubbing like that, we're going to come back and finish that later because we can put our wing on now. So give yourself a thread base all the way to the eye. Come back just behind the eye. Maybe leave that much. And you guys are going to use Parapost. I'm going to use this poly yarn. I like it. Uh, either one's fine. Dave has both over there. And I'm going to take a section of that. And I tie it on differently than probably what you're used to seeing. But I'll show you what, how I do it and why I do it. I'm going to separate that. So I got a piece that's about like that. This is how I do my wing post. I lay it uh, parallel to the hook. I want to get it. You should never try to crowd the eye, but you can get right up there with this. Because I don't want to put more dubbing up there. If you don't get it up there close enough, and you don't want a big head, you could add some dubbing later. Once again, firm tension. Then I bring them up. And this is called articulating. If your vise uh, rotates, once you get them a couple of turns around there, you can do it this way too. It's a little faster and uh, easier gives you something to hackle around, it brings that stuff together, makes some wraps in front and in back. Then we'll go back to the mono where we quit dubbing and we're gonna finish dubbing that. And we're almost ready to hackle. Once again, keep it light, especially here. Because you've got that mono on top of that hook so it's twice as thick as it normally would be. So keep it skimpy. And we just fill in that gap with dubbing. Take it real, almost right up to that post because I don't like to tie my that's kind of sloppy mark <laughs> I don't like to tie my uh, hackle on dubbing if I have to I will but I don't really like it You gotta kind of look at them. They're, they make hackle gauges, 
Um, I've been doing it for so long I don't use it, but I can just bend it and look and see what size I want. That's a little bit too small. Let's see if there's something bigger up here. About like that. Your saddle hackle, probably Tyler's already sized for you, so it's probably perfect for a 14-ish, 12-ish size fly. When I prepare my hackle, I get right, I don't like a lot of web, so I get rid of that. And then I go like that. And then I go like this. I do it on every fly I tie. Could you see the little whiskers? You see them? Everybody see them? Okay. It makes it so much easier to tie it in. You make one turn, it's right there. Do not overhackle this fly. You do not need to do it. You have saddle hackle there, you're going to be tempted to put a ton of it on there. Don't do it. You don't need it. It'll see? float. It's all synthetic. It will float. You tied it in on the side, the back side? I tied it in on, yeah, on my side. You want me to do it again? No. Just confirming Maybe if I tip, can I tip it down? Can you see it that way? Yeah, okay. Thank you. And the reason for that is you have a convex and a concave side to a hackle. If you tie it in and the concave side's up, your hackle's going to tie up like this. So you want the, the shiny side or the good side up so that when you grab it, you probably don't need hackle pliers with the length of that. Just don't over hackle it. Parachuting, most of what I do is parachuted. Let's see how big that is. Yeah, it's a little big, but we'll use it. Once you make a couple of turns, you want to try to climb up the diameter of the stem up and around and then back down. Just make sure on your last turn when you're satisfied that you've got enough hackle on there to float it and you haven't over hackled it. I keep trying to wet my fingers. You pick that stuff up, you let your uh, hackle players hold it, there's a tip sticking out there. You want to tie that down, nice firm wraps. At this point you've got a, a thing where uh, you can cut it or you can snap it off. If you cut it and it's, your thread wraps are right next to the eye, you're going to have these whiskers sticking into the eye of that hook and you can't get them out of there no matter what you do. So what I do is I snap them off. Then wet my fingers and gather them up and make them go backwards. Form a nice neat head. You want to be a neat fly tire. You, want, you don't want stuff sticking out the front and getting in there with scissors then have a bunch of whiskers sticking out there. Now, you can whip finish by hand, that's what I usually do. If you have a whip finish tool, you can use that. This is handmade. Um, the guy that taught me to tie flies when I was a kid, for God's sakes, was a shop teacher, and he made that. You can still get them, they're not as popular as the Renzettis, but you still gotta get your hands in there or you're going to tie those barbules down that you just, because they come out of nowhere. You don't know where they're going to come from. And trim it. Position your hackle. Hopefully you didn't over hackle the fly. Pick a size. It's up to you. You can do it. The reason I like poly yarn is you can do this. Like that, make an angle. You can go in and you can do it with parapost too, but it, this is seems to fill better. And you can go like that. And then when I head cement, 
I always do it from down here. And I give it a good blast so that it goes up into that wing and everything's solid. And you're done.